everybody. It's me, Dee, from Fire Within Coaching. Um, in today's episode, we have something very special. Um, so as you guys know, I love interviewing um, people within my community. Um, and a lot of that is because this is my community, right? People are making big changes. So today we're going to talk to Tanya Coles. Hey, Tanya, how you doing? Hello, Dee. How are you? I'm doing well. Wow, I am pumped that you're here and you're in my community like that's so amazing I'm excited to be here excited awesome be so you, now you have opened uh, your own trauma recovery um organization is that correct it is correct um I started Emerge in June of 2020 in the middle of the pandemic because there was a lot of conversation that was starting to come to to light about trauma. Of course, I believe that the pandemic was a collective trauma that we all had to move through because we were living in unprecedented times at that time. And so I felt that there was a need to start to have these conversations because at one point in time, trauma was something that was taboo. We didn't talk about it openly. It was something that we either talked about with a therapist or a professional, but we never talked about it in general conversation. And so I felt like people needed to be heard as far as some of the various devastating events, life-altering events that they have gone through. They needed to have a voice. They needed to be heard. And they needed to be made, they, they needed to feel okay about being heard and sharing. And so I started Emerge in June of 2020. It started as a ministry, just a ministry to people who were traumatized. And then Throughout that, I launched it with a four-week course on the basis of trauma, and that course was called I Am Not Okay. And so with I Am Not Okay, it was four weeks of us getting to the basis of the trauma, defining it, understanding how it affects uh, childhood trauma can affect our adult health, right. understanding various uh, triggers and coping mechanisms, parent associations, why do certain smells, certain sounds, certain sights uh, cause us to relive the trauma that we've gone through and to understand how those two things are associated. And then the last week was us learning creative ways to be able to tell our story, whether it's through song, whether it's through poetry, whether it's through art, just different ways because I am a musician and I'm also um, a vocalist. And so I wanted to help people learn how to share their stories in non-conventional ways. You don't need a microphone. And you don't necessarily need uh, to be in front of a large room in order to share your story, but right. you can use your Instagram reels, you can use TikTok, you yeah. can use Facebook, you can use these means as a way of expressing your story. Yeah. And so I wanted people, because oftentimes when you've been traumatized or been through a trauma, you feel muted mm -hmm. and, the, and shame can cause you to be muted. Oh, and yeah. so I wanted people to feel empowered in telling their story by using a creative outlet to do so with, you know, so that was the uh, basics of that. And so I taught several classes in 2020 on various things, parent wounds, um, self-sabotage, mm -hmm. different areas like that. I went into overcoming shame and, and all of those. And so it was, once I got, I, once we got out of the pandemic and started moving back into a more normal way of life, um, I thought it would be a great idea to expand what Emerge offers so that we're not just trauma, 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 but that right. there are other areas that we want to explore because we want to speak to the whole person. And so workplace burnout was an area that I, I've studied a lot. I've experienced it myself mm -hmm. and I've studied it a lot. So uh, like you were saying, psychological safety, workplace burnout, how to help professionals, how to help people in ministry mm -hmm. to overcome those things and to identify those signs of burnout so that they don't go down the path of being burnt yeah. out. And then overcoming shame, defeating self-sabotage and identifying self-sabotaging behaviors as professionals. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can be our own enemy and stand in our own way. Girl. And so how do I get out of my own way? Yeah. <laughs> I, I get, get out of my own way so that yeah. I can see, so I don't keep having all these unfinished projects and then yeah. I'll keep going over and over again. And then um, one more area that um, we wanted to focus on was overcoming shame mm -hmm. and releasing that voice that we have, that voice to be able to tell our story without the self-loathing, without feeling right. like we're not worthy, without counting ourselves out. Right. And so I want I wanted to help people. Every area that I coach in is an area that I have had to overcome myself. I love it. So I've lived it, I've walked it, and I want to help others get to that to that healed place 
so that they can really walk and run in their purpose. I mean, can I just say, wow, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that is, that's, that really is, it's amazing. And I feel like it really shows who you are um, and that you are, you are here to serve people based off of your experiences and your education. And personally, I feel like experience can teach you a lot more um, you know, cause that's when you're on the job. That's when you're in the moment. That's when, you know, you have times that maybe someone says something that you feel is wrong, but again, it's you. So you have to figure out your own crap, which is kind of where, where it comes from. So what are some type of issues that someone, um, work-related issues that somebody would have issues with, um, that they would come to you? Well, a work-related issue, I think a lot of times we take on too many tasks at one time. And I know in this current economy with work, workplace shortages, everybody's wearing multiple hats right now yeah. because we simply can't find the staff that we need. We can't stay staff. We can't get the staff in. So everybody's working. Uh, everybody's working a lot and everybody's wearing, wearing multiple hats. And one thing that I seek to kind of debunk in, in the conversation about burnout is that there's always been this focus on workplace balance, workplace, work-life balance, excuse mm -hmm. me, work-life balance, work-life balance. How do mm -hmm. I manage it all? How do I make time for it all? Mm -hmm. yeah. But I am more along the lines of workplace, work-life rhythm. And what I mean by that is there is a time where you're going to have to put something to the side mm -hmm. in order to shift your focus to what's more important. And that takes us making priorities. And I know that's something we don't want to do because as women, we want to yep. nurture and we want to take care of everything and everyone and we want to be there for everyone. And so we try to fit everything in, you know, how do I spend time with the kids? But then how do I focus on my career? But then how do I build my business? Like I try to focus on everything at once, but right. there comes a time where you might have to put something to the side, like, okay, maybe I need to put the business on hold for now so that I can spend more time with my family. Right. Uh, maybe I need to stop doing um, events mm -hmm. so that I can focus on reading, studying and growing in my craft, you know? So there are times where we just have to have a rhythm set versus trying to carry all of it at one time because mm -hmm. you know, there's an old saying that says, you know, you can be a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Right. And so you can get your hands in everything, but can you really excel in all of it at one time? And there's a great possibility. You can't excel at everything. Yeah. You know, I'd rather get an A plus in two classes rather than getting all C's in five classes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, you know, sometimes we just have to put certain things on hold. We have to determine what is most important, put certain things on hold, and then focus on what is more important so that we can grow that and make that successful. Right. And and how do you, so how do you get to that point of what, what do you need to work on? Um, because like you said, there's a layer of shame. Um, and, and then it, cause you had mentioned women, like, I feel like we have shame if we don't do it. And then, you know, if, then we have shame if we do it wrong, you know, or what's perceived wrong. Um, so I feel like it's just, it's, it's all in our own heads. And like you said, we just got to get out of our own ways. We do. So we have to first look at what parts, what areas of our life need our attention the most. Mm -hmm. um, if we have children and we notice that our children are having some behavioral issues, they're having some emotional issues, okay, well, maybe it's because they need more of our time and our attention. Right. If we have a business that just does not seem to be growing, maybe it's because we're not putting enough time into that business. Right. Maybe we're not spending enough time each day cultivating that business so that it can grow. And so we have to really just take inventory of the various areas of our life that we're working in and to mm -hmm. see which ones need more attention, which ones are the most anemic areas of our life that need that cultivating. Yeah. And how much time, if we be real with ourselves, how much time are we spending on building those things? How much time do we spend building that business? How much time are we spending writing that book? You know, we're only getting to it once a month where we write a couple of pages and then it goes back into our files for the next two or three months. Then we're not really getting giving the time to it that we need to. But right. what if we just took 30 minutes to write a couple of pages each day? Yeah. What if we need 
to finish that book? And what if we just sat down and spent 10 minutes each night reading that book? It might take us a little longer to get to the end, but we'll be seeing progress being made. And so also, too, we have to chip away. Sometimes you have to chip away at things. Because yeah. we're used to starting it and finishing it, boom, and it's done. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's like, okay, I can't finish all of this today, but I'm going to um, write two pages tonight. Yeah. And then I'm going to write two more pages this weekend. And, you know, I'm going to get at it instead of thinking I need to sit down and write a book from start to finish right. the moment I sit down. Now, some folks are really gifted in that area. Yes. They can they can crank out a book in a week. You know, they can sit down and write 200 pages in a week. And and great, you know. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's fantastic. I don't have that ability. I don't either, okay? I, I'm not going to lie to myself and say, I'm going to sit here and write this book and it's yeah. going to be done in a week. No, it's not. But what I can do is say, you know what, maybe I can get a chapter done this month. February, I'm going to finish chapter five. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm going to do. And so when we take those tasks and we break those down into area, into sizes that we can manage, it doesn't make the task seem so big. Because if I say I'm going to write a book, that's a big task. But if I say, you know what, I'm just going to work on writing the introduction this month and then I'm going to see where the rest of it goes. Right. Then we can break that down, writing an outline and making a schedule of, of how we're going to take on the different things that we're doing and the time we're going to spend. Okay, I'm going to spend two hours reading today, yeah. but then I'm going to spend an hour working on my business today. Right. I, you know, Dave Ramsey has an app called Every Dollar, and Every Dollar is designed to help you budget every dollar to zero, which means every single dollar you make has an assignment, it has a place yeah. to go. And so the hours of our day should be allocated in that same fashion. Every hour of our day should be allocated to something. Yeah. Well, even if it's sleeping, if it's from 12 to 6 is sleeping, then that's what those hours yeah. are allocated for. But the rest of the hours of our day should be allocated to something, whether it's preparing our food, whether it's bathing, right. getting ready, uh, whether it's studying, you know, every hour of our day. So when we have a planner in front of us that has the different hours of the day, mm-hmm. each of those hours should be spoken for. There should be something in those slots that we're doing in those days because we don't do that. We get mm-hmm. off, we go, we, we go from a structured day of going to work from eight to four or whatever. Mm-hmm. We go from a structured day and then from four to bedtime, it's, yeah. just, it's just wide open. We, yeah. we well, I might get some eat. Well, you know, I might lay down for a few minutes watch this movie. Well, you know, I might. And it's like, okay, I need these hours of my day to be allocated. Just like my work day is allocated to work eight to four thirty, then the rest of my day needs to be allocated from five to six. I'm doing this. From six to eight, I'm doing this. From eight, yeah. to six, you know, we have to have that. And so when we break those things down into a, a method, a system that can be operated, then we'll see the outcome that right. we're looking. Right. And it's, it's also being habitual. Um, I feel like too, cause when you were talking about that, I, I remembered when I was working full time, starting my business, trying to eat right. Um, taking care of my kids, trying to be a good wife. So it just added on, added on, added on. And that stuff is really overwhelming. Um, but it's the pressure that I put on myself. It's the pressure that I put on myself to be the best wife, to be the best mom. Um, And that's just irrational because, you know, yeah, you could be the best that you could be, but you're always going to think you could do better. Um, So it really, it's self-acceptance, accepting where you are, where you want to be and how you're going to get there. That's true. And it's tough now in the social media age because everything is so visible. So we see the visible life the visible pieces of of people's lives and we're like wow I'm not there yet they're so much further ahead of me they're you know doing everything that I want to do and or they're doing it better than me or they're more innovative than me and you see those things it makes you go wow you know when you see the beautiful family stories and pictures you're thinking come on you know I need to be doing more of that I need to be that kind of mom I need to be that kind of coach I need to be that kind of you know you start to to see those things, you put that unnecessary pressure on yourself because it seems like uh, everybody else is doing it better than you. (laughs) No, I mean, we're seeing a piece of their lives, but we don't know what's going on Mm -hmm. or what they 
they had to go through to get to this place. Right. And we just need to be worried, not worried, but concerned about focusing on our own lives and what's in front of us and not comparing our, our lives to what other people are living. Right. Right. Because they're not living your life. They don't have the same um, struggles that you have. Um, you know, like both you and I can say, Hey, you know, we had burnout at work, but your burnout is, I assume very different than mine because we, you know, worked in separate areas. So I think that that's important too, that you could make all the changes that you want to yourself. But then when it gets to that point, you have to change your environment if, if it's still like that. Um, so if, like if you're at home and, you know, you're always at five o'clock, you come home and maybe get into an argument with your husband. Well, that needs to be, we need to fix that. We need to find the problem to that, you know, so it's, it's, and if you can't, then you remove yourself. So like, if you don't like a job, well, I don't want to do this anymore. Let me get a new one. And you remove yourself from that environment. Um, some of the problem with burnout is, is you can associate the whole organization with your feelings of burnout. And that's what I would love to get rid of, rid of that, you know, that my pro uh, that thought process, because I mean, honestly, we're in control and yes, maybe the, you know, the, the environment and stuff is not set for you, but you always have a choice. You always have a choice. Do I want something better? Do I want to work on myself or am I okay um, with, my current situation. Absolutely. Cause there are just certain jobs that are going to be stressful regardless. Yeah. Uh, nursing is a job that's going to be stressful. There are certain fields that are just natural stress, high demand. Yeah. That's yeah. just the nature of the beast. And there's nothing you can do to change right. that aspect of it. Except right. like you said, change your environment. Maybe I need to get out of this field. You know, if I'm feeling burnt out, if I can no longer handle the demand and the stress, maybe I'm changing, my life has changed, and I, 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 can, I can no longer, maybe I'm getting older and I just can no longer do yeah. all of this. Maybe I need to remove myself from this. And so, yes, environment is extremely important. And that's why studies show that people that work remotely are generally less stressed. Yeah. And they're generally more happy. They're more at peace than those that go into the office every day. Yeah. And I can definitely speak to that because prior to the pandemic, I was working in the office every day. Mm -hmm. And I've been working from home ever since 2020. And yes, it's a tremendous difference. Mm -hmm. You're more relaxed. You're more at ease. You don't feel as much pressure because yeah. you're not in the environment that, that cultivates those types of emotions. Right. And so you're, you're at home in your own space, your own environment where you can feel more at ease even though you're doing the exact same job. So yes, environment yeah. makes a tremendous difference. Huge. Yeah. Well, and, and with the environment also like who are, who do you use for your support system? So, you know, if you have say limited belief systems from childhood, but that's kind of, you go to your mom or you go to your dad that still have that same belief system, that's what you're going to get. So if you want something different, you need to put yourself out there and find those people that bring that goodness and that joy out of you. Um, Cause it really does beam, it beams out of you when you're happy, you know, like I had mentioned your smile, y'all don't you have a beautiful smile. So with your smile, like it lit me up as soon as I saw it, it was like, Oh my gosh, look at that. So it's, it's really, it's the people that you have around you and how they show up for you um so I mean and that's why they say they say oh well you go ahead and smile because you never know if you're going to make someone happy it's true that is true I, and yes be, having the right support system is so mm -hmm. important and stepping outside of those comfort zones mm -hmm. stepping outside of those cultural comfort zones so mm -hmm. uh traditional comfort zones, those social comfort zones, yeah. is very important, important to our personal growth. Right. And it helps us to develop and to understand different personalities, different lifestyles, different backgrounds. Right. Because like you said, if we have a limited belief system and we keep going to our family, mm -hmm. of course, they're going to affirm that belief system. And it, it could be preventing us from growing and understanding and discovering. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why uh, a lot of students are always, you know, um, advised to go live overseas for a while. Oh, yeah. Go overseas, 
Um, I know in the Christian community, in the church, you know, they mm-hmm. always push going on a missions trip. You need to see how other cultures yeah. live. You need to understand that America is not the only, is not the way of life of the world. Right. That way of right. life in the, America. Yeah. Like you need to go to Haiti. You need to go to Mexico. You need yeah. to go to a, a Argentina. You need to go to another country to see how they live. And it gives you a much broader world view. Right which we need in this time because the world is becoming more and more flat in technology and globalization. Yeah. We need to have a broader world view. So, yeah. Yeah. And I love that. And, uh, you know, so that's part of the reason for the podcast, right? Is I, I was craving just that cultural diversity. I was craving to get sort of out of the box that I put myself in and to meet people from other countries, hear their stories. Um, Cause even if you look at, you know, my cousin lives in Italy and we're the same age, um, but we grew up very differently. And you can even see how that kind of shows up now with the world views. Um, so I really, I love that you can find your people that have those like-minded, um, you know, they could be in Asia, they could be, you know, they could be wherever and here you are in America or vice versa. So putting yourself out there and being uncomfortable um, and having, you know, I might mess up. I might not say the right thing This you might, you know, find this offensive, you know? Um, so just having that open dialogue and being willing and open to just embracing other cultures, I think is is definitely um, it's it's an amazing experience. It really is. And the way our culture has changed, you're almost being forced to have to to learn how to exist in these types of diverse environments because we are all working in diverse environments. We're mm-hmm. living in diverse environments. We're communicating in diverse settings, yeah. and so almost being. Or it's, it's actually more difficult to stay in that box because the world is now, a, 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 you know, a, just a big, diverse oh, circle yeah. of people to where, you know, now you, you have to learn how to exist yeah. with people who are not like you exactly. and who don't um, understand or relate to where you come from and all of that stuff. It's almost like now you have to learn how to exist in that environment and it's becoming less common to to exist in a small you know kind of micro type of, of thing. right so, yeah right I love that um, so I just love your energy. Let me just say that too. Like you can tell um, like I was talking about beaming like you can tell that this is your jam. This is what you were mm-hmm. meant to do. Um, and I just, I love that. And I love that you put your church um, in with it as well, because religion and spirituality is a really big part of who you, who we are as well. Um, yeah. So I love that you, you know, just sort of lead with that. I think that that's wonderful. Um, so if you could talk to yourself um, 10 years ago, so I know that it's a little dicey with me, right? So 10 yeah. years ago, if you had a time machine and you went back to yourself, what would you say to yourself? I would definitely say to myself to cultivate a life, your own individual life, and not to get not to get so drawn in to other people's purpose that you don't cultivate your own purpose. Um, because I'm the kind of person I'm a, I guess I'm loyal, maybe, maybe to a fault even, but you know, at one time in my life, I was so focused on helping other people build their vision and to build right. their purpose and, and to do all the Excel and what they were doing that I neglected to cultivate yeah. mine. So I would say, continue to grow, continue to cultivate those gifts, continue to grow in your craft, continue to perfect. Um, the things that you are gifted in, focus on your gifts. Don't be focusing on trying to do what other people are doing if that is not your strength. Right. Focus on building your strength. Enhance your strength. And um, not worry about trying to be everything to everyone. Be the best person you can be for yourself first. And then once you are the best person you can be for yourself, then you can be a great person for other people. But you cannot pour from an empty cup. So it's important 
that you pour into yourself, yeah. love yourself, build yourself. And yeah. then from that, people will experience the overflow of what you have put in yourself. So that's what I would say. I could not have said that better myself. That was amazing. Thank you for that. And it's true. I mean, you can't pour from an empty cup. You, if you keep giving and giving and giving and not receiving, you're going to get burnt out. You're going to get burnt out and you're going to likely have some mental health issues as well um, from that burnt out. So it's important uh, to have that communication and to really honestly just talk about how you feel. Um, there's nothing to be embarrassed. We're all human. You know, we all have the same, same issues. You know, we just yeah. handle it a little differently. It doesn't matter, you know, human, that's, that's what we are. Um, so now if you go 10 years in the future, um, and what would your future self tell you about your accomplishments? I, I believe that my future self will be thanking me for the groundwork that I'm laying today to help me to achieve the life that I am achieving in the once I get to that future yeah. self I believe that my future self will be thanking me for the groundwork that I'm laying today and to uh, my future self would tell me you know keep going keep pushing because we're building something here we're creating something here and don't be discouraged mm -hmm. don't allow yourself to be set back don't keep put don't treat this treat this as a life work don't treat it as just a hobby this right is this is who we are. This is what we do. And so my future self would thank me, I believe, for the Love work it. that I, I'm laying out and to keep going, to keep going. I, I think your future self is going to thank you as well. <laughs> um, it, it, and it's true. I, I think that as humans, we get so caught up in the present, which you, I mean, we should be present. But you also want to think about the future and want to think about what you can do to make steps to reach, to get you to where you want to be. Um, you know, that's how you grow. That's how you change. Um, and it's really important to do so, especially if you're not happy with your life. Look at your life um, and figure out where you can fix it. You don't have to be miserable. You don't have to be unhappy. Um, you know, you can choose happiness. Right. That's true. Yeah. I love it. I love it. This has been so great. Um, do you have anything else that you would like to add for, you know, to our viewers? Are you looking for collaborators? I'm always open. Emerge is always open to collaborating with others that are on the same vein. And so um, I'm still in the process of building things up, but I'm always open to um, podcasts. I'm always open to um, any type of in-person teachings. We do workshops. We do um, in-person uh, seminars and things of that nature. Yeah. And so any type of in-person uh, presentations and things like that, I thank everybody in the Roanoke Valley and beyond for um, for encouraging us, for, um, for, you know, opening doors for us to uh, get this message out to people because we want a healthy Roanoke Valley. Uh, yeah state of Virginia we want a healthy United States and yep. so we want to start here in our own community and so um, I'm grateful for every door that has been open I'm grateful for you Dee for having me here today I'm grateful for this opportunity and um, Emerge is willing to partner with the Roanoke Valley and with those in the Roanoke Valley so that we can create a healthier Roanoke. I mean we can't get better than that that's amazing. And you can bet that Fire Within Coaching and Emerge are going to be doing some stuff together. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, um, so what I tend to do, and I'm still kind of figuring out this whole podcast thing. So I like to celebrate. So let's just celebrate you real quick. So you're doing so good. You're so proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> you really are. You're making an impact in the community. I love it. Thank so you. until next time, Tanya, because I know I'm going to have you back on. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.